All right, welcome back. Uh, so today we're making a setup so that we have an enemy here who only chases us when we're within their little area. If we're outside of that area, won't chase us anymore. So we're kind of leashing our enemy here, we're making sure our enemy doesn't move outside of its own position. So stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so let's dive right in. Uh, today we're going to make a new type of enemy that is restricted by a boundary. And you can apply this to any of the enemies. Um, what might happen is you might see yourself being chased by one of the logs, and then if you go to another room, you don't want that enemy to chase you. Um, however, the way the game is currently set up, it would. So if you ever want to restrict your enemy to any boundaries, um, that's what we're going to do here. So. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these uh, logs that I currently have and I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control D. Uh, and then I'm going to move this one to another area so that I know which one is the uh, is the area log I'm creating here. So I'm just going to move this little duder over there. Um, I'm going to rename it from log2 to area log. Now, right now this is acting as an ex instance of a prefab. I want it to be different. So I want to break the prefab instance and make a new prefab instance. In versions of Unity before 2018.3, you would do that by highlighting the object, going to game object, and then choosing break prefab instance. In 2018.3, uh, with their new prefab workflow, you right click the object and we want to unpack the prefab completely. And that, as you can see, turns it from a blue box to a white box, which means it's no longer the prefab. Now I'm going to write a new script for this. So I'm going to remove the old log script, and I'm going to write a new script that inherits from log. So it'll have all the good stuff that we want from the log, like the animation and the state machine and everything, and the knockback. But we'll be adding the uh, requirement that it stay within its little area here. So. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a script for that. So I'm going to go to my uh, scripts folder right here. And I added a folder here. This is actually the second time I've recorded this video. The first time I recorded this video, I made this folder for enemy stuff. So in here, I'm going to make a new script. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create. And I'm going to create a C sharp script. I'm going to call this area enemy. Then I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. I'm also going to open up the base log script because I want to be able to see some stuff going on in there. So I'll open those up and I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. I have my area enemy script, I have my regular old log script, and I'm gonna be using this. So again, like I said, this is actually the second time I've recorded this, so I made all these changes to the log script in the first time, and I just, I'm just i gonna go over the changes really quick. So right now we're in the log script, which is inheriting from enemy. I made the rigid body 2D public because I wanna be able to use that in the derived script. So let's actually derive that really quickly here. So area enemy, instead of deriving from mono behavior, is going to derive from log, which derives from enemy, which derives from mono behavior. Um, then my log here, I made the rigid body public. I added a little header here for variables about the target. So like the target that it's chasing, the player, uh, the radius in which it'll chase, the radius in which it'll attack. And this home position, I haven't used that yet. I'll come back to that later probably, so you don't need to remove that, but I'm making all these public. Same thing with the animator. Even though the rigid body and the animator both get set in the start method, I'm making them public um, so that I can do stuff with them in the child class. I also made all of the uh, methods public. So starting at the bottom, change state is now a public void. Change anim is now a public void set anim float is now a public void uh, and check distance not only did I make it public but I made it virtual by making it virtual you can have a class that derives from this override it and change the way it works so if 
I save all of this, I'm going to pop back into area enemy here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the start and update loop because I don't need those, but I do need a reference to its boundaries. So I'm going to make a public, and the boundaries can be any shape you want it to be. You can use a circle collider, uh, a box collider, a polygon collider, um, so that I can use any kind of collider I want, like maybe one enemy I want to have a circle collider, and maybe another I want to have a box collider. Instead of calling this a specific, I'm going to call it a collider 2D. And then I'm just going to call this boundary. And then I'll create that in Unity, and I'll, I'll set that up. Now next, I want to make a public override void check distance. And you can see it auto-completed for check distance because that was the only virtual void I had in the base class. So um, by default, it brings up base.checkDistance, which does everything within the check distance. But I didn't do a great job when I made this code. I didn't make it super uh, extendable, so I'm just going to have to copy check distance and make my changes. So I'm going to grab everything inside check distance here uh, from the if statement down to the, you know, this little brace down here. Not the final brace, but that brace there. I'm going to copy this and jump back to area enemy. And then I'll paste this in there. And the main idea is we want it to chase the player so long as the player's position is within the boundaries. If the player's position is not within the boundaries, we're going to have the log go back to sleep. So the way the check distance method works is we check to see the distance from the, uh, the target and our current position. And if that's less than the chase radius, meaning if our player is inside that, and it's also greater than the attack radius, then we're going to check to see what the current state is. And we're going to uh, move towards transformed up position. Uh, other, and we'll do all this change anim stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another condition to um, whether or not we're going to chase towards the player. So the extra condition I'm going to add here as part of this if statement is, uh, so to check within, if something is within bounds, you have to do um, boundary, so the collider, dot bounds dot contains, and the point I want to make sure it contains is target dot transform dot position. So if the target is within there, uh, then I'm going to do that. And then for my else, I'm going to add another condition as well. So uh, we're going to go to sleep if our uh, player is more than the chase radius away or um, do 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 yeah not boundary dot bounds dot contains and we want to make sure it contains the target dot transform dot position so if the player is out of bounds so I'm going to save that and I'm going to jump back into Unity here and I'm going to let that compile for a second now I'm going to uh, make a new empty game object which is going to hold my boundaries for these enemies so I'm going to go to create as soon as Unity is done compiling here I'm going to create an empty I'm going to set this at 0, 0, 0 so 0, 0, 0 and this is just going to be a boundary holder so enemy boundary holder and then as a child of this so I'm going to create another empty game object and I'm going to call this boundary 1 and boundary 1 is this enemy's boundary so I'm going to put it here I'm going to make sure it's marked and then to the object itself I'm going to add a box collider 2D and I will edit that box collider here so that it takes up this dark green patch of grass I've got set up. So up, down, right, and left. I'm going to also make this a trigger so that uh, the player can pass through it. And now if I go over to area log here, I need to add the area log script to it that I just created, or area enemy. Now, uh, there's a lot of stuff I have to reset here. So if I go to my scriptable objects and my enemy healths. Is it enemy healths or enemy health? I'm going to stick with enemy healths. So my two hit, um, my enemy name, I'm just going to call this guy Bob. 
Uh, base attack is going to be... Oh, maybe. There we go. Base attack is one. Move speed is one. This is going to be a chunky monkey. Uh, for death effect, I'm going to go to my prefab effects. And I'll give it the enemy death effect. For the rigid body, this should be set in start. I thought I checked that. Yeah, it should be. Maybe it won't be. That'll be okay. Target is the player. Uh, I'm going to set the chase radius to 6. And the attack radius to 1. Uh, no home position. The animator should be set in start. And now the boundary is this collider. So let's test this out and see what I broke. So we're going to hit play. And we should see our camera recenter back on our player really fast here. There we go. So we're going to go over, pay this little duder a visit. So right now I'm outside. I'm inside. Now I'm outside. Inside. Outside. So there we go. Uh, the enemy's only going to follow me while I'm inside here. Now we could add to this by having a home position, which is what I think I originally planned to do, um, where when our enemy isn't chasing our player anymore, they move towards their home position, and then when they're at their home position, they go to sleep. Um, but, yeah, so there we go. We've got this enemy is kind of set to only work during uh, when, you're, when you're within these boundaries. So, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.